This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulua Gola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. Begin to speak on spiritual heritage. That word mantle is a six-letter word creeps into our into our register. So somebody is saying, What is a mantle? Because many times mantles are mixed with the anointing. And um, it's not so because the anointing is designed to be God's empowerment for a specific assignment. So, sir, I said to you when we were talking about our mama this morning that you're, you sit on a throne as president. Watch me. That throne, as long as you are president, you can release the energies of it. But the reason why that throne is strong is because it houses not just you, but every, the energies of every other person that sat on that throne. And if you know it that way, you will be very strong for your one year. However, if you don't labor into your own, you can stop you can step out of being prayer called and become prayerless instantly because you are using the energy of a throne and not your personal energy once you're out of the office the spirit of the lord lives and the spirit of let me explain what i'm saying the spirit of the lord is not the spirit of god it's a dimension of the holy spirit it's the spirit of lordship that's what kings rule with. In other words, it's the spirit of dominion. The problem with Saul was that Saul had not cultivated a relationship with God. Saul ruled for about 28 years or 30. Is it 30? Almost about 40 years. And he did not rule with the Ark of the Covenant. He, he ruled from his soul so god was not furnished in the heart of saul so when the spirit of dominion that made him king left there was a void that personal relationship had not covered so a strange spirit called an evil spirit entered Saul. that's the fate of everyone that sits on a throne and does not labor into their own let me come back to what i'll say from that throne as president you can bless and there will be consequences there will be results if somebody is struggling you see you don't even need to pray long because you are sitting on a throne and as long as you live by the consecrations of that office that you are not misusing it the energies of that throne will work however because every tenor has an assignment in addition to the energies of the throne god will gift your executive team an anointing that anointing will be god's enablement to do what you are supposed to do for one year and when the new guys come because the assignment is going to be slightly altered altered they will not have that anointing they will have the throne plus an anointing are you getting my point is it hard? I've always been praying for grace to make very heavy spiritual things sound like cheap material. Now help me, Holy Ghost. Can I have four individuals here? Four, four, just four. Quickly, 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 quickly. If you went to a proper secondary school, because some did not go to proper secondary schools, yes. It's just, it's, it's, it's just the truth you should have a football field now you know that some schools are not proper because some don't have and you must have um, witnessed what we call the inter-house sports that's the closest example to what God is doing across generations so these four men are part of a relay quartet and if your field is well shaped the, sec the second leg and the fourth leg 
will run straight courses. The first and the third will run the curve. I was always on the third leg because I could manage curves. I'm not tall, so my center of gravity is low, so my balance is good. So, straight, straight, curve, curve. They will need different energies, like anointings, to run their particular courses because they are not running the same course. Even though the aim is that if this man finishes well, they will be crowned. Are you getting me? So whatever he does affects him, affects him, and affects the final outcome. This is how God moves. There is only going to be one common reality among the relay quartet. It means to run their course, they must carry what? A betting. That's what a mantle is. But he needs to know how to manage his curve. And in trying to manage that curve, he needs to know how to still be fast and not fall. He does not need that grace because he's going to run a straight course. He does not need that grace because he's going to run a straight course. But they are also not the same. Because he can slow down at betting exchange. He must finish strong. So, it's all the same race. That race is broken into, into four parts. Just like the counsel or the agenda of God is broken into generations. All of them must bear the same mantle. And the passage of the betting is proof that some ran before you. If they ran very fast, it means you will carry the mantle and you will be ahead. If they run very slow, you'll be behind. But you cannot press the tape without proof that there was something you received from the former generation. You get my point now? So if you are doing something in God now that you pioneered, and when you look back into the body of Christ, you find out that you are the only one doing what you are doing. God did not send you. Go to sit down. Because God cannot start with you in 2021 he's not like that even the blessing is, is transferred transgenerationally that's why he's god of abraham isaac and generation and, and uh, jacob and then ultimately became god of israel there's no new light that you want to shine your light is supposed to be your part in god's general agenda for shining so if you are at 100 level now, glory to God. By the time you get to 500 level, you find out that the emphasis of shining may be different. But it will just be because for your own set, there's a new emphasis. God still wants to leave a witness of light in the earth realm. All of them will carry the beating. But they will carry different anointings for their assignment. The betting is what qualifies you to continue in the race. If it drops, then it's the end for all of you. Somebody will have to pick it up. If not, getting to the end does not matter. Can I announce to you that our generation is that final generation that will breast the tape? Unfortunately, many just started running, not knowing that there was something God was doing in the past. So we find out that it's so easy to be off alignment. And that's why we use that word consciously. Because if you don't know what God is doing, it will be difficult for you to align with what, or what God did. It will be difficult for you to align with what God is doing. The secret of the future is actually in the past. I was listening to God's servant, Dr. David Ogwedi, in that my sermon. He said something that blew my mind. He said there are people in Nigeria now who are afraid that there will be an outbreak of war. He said it's impossible. And I wanted to hear his reason. He's a very wise man. And I wanted to hear his reason. He said because if you look at Nigeria, we run a 40-year circle. So we are like in 1971 now. And I started studying. I want to know what the church is like was like in the 1970s uh, 1971 the revival broke out about 77 78 79 it means that if you are laboring accurately if we do what we are doing well for another five years we enter another revival the revival that produced the bishop the pastor wf kumuis baba is a little bit older than all of that 
but we know that within the next five years something major is going to happen in the body of Christ it's not going to happen next month no matter how hard we pray because there's a circle so he now said you know why he said there will not be war he said because the civil war was 1967 68 69 so the last three or four years were the years that held the possibility of war the nation quaked you know the, the insurgents bombed everything but God ensured that we escaped it so if we are in 2021 now we don't have war ahead of us those who will come after maybe another 35 36 years need to ensure that there's no war we know that prosperity is coming because the 1970s also held the oil boom and it was at that point that the church because of so much money derailed and picked what you currently call the prosperity gospel it's a 40 year circle many of the things that we call error with doctrine now is going to die in the next four years because that's what happened that time too i'm saying the secret of the future is in the past cycles cycles when god decides to become cyclic then young people should become students of history are you getting it? go and check go and check what happened first you need to understand what year cycle you're on is it a five year cycle is it a ten year cycle so that you go back to check rcf ten years ago you will know these things in prayer they are not secret things they are revealed things you just have to labor into them but that's not really where i'm going where i'm going is that to be able to come into that layer of luminance that will put out this darkness jesus will need to among you resurrect men who have labored accurately in their generation and have inherited the labors of those that have come behind them one of those portions in scriptures where we can establish this reality of transferred energies is in second kings chapter 2 and that's where i'm going to take my reading and then we're going to go when you get home i want you to study okay okay i've not even used up to that one hour when you get back home i want you to study the first 14 verses i don't know if you do long bible readings like that uh, is it fine I should be done in like three four minutes so if you have your bible second kings chapter two and it came to pass you can join me now in 25 minutes and it came to pass when the lord will take elijah into heaven by a whirlwind not by a chariot of fire that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal and Elijah said unto Elisha tarry here I pray thee for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel and Elisha said unto him as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave thee so they went down to Bethel and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today. You will be without a covering at the close of this day. And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said to Elisha to him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. It's called the mystery of divine discouragement. When God wants to give something to a generation. But he begins to put stones before them so that the numbers will thin out he announces i'm going to raise great men and then he comes with a demand for fasting 500 becomes 15. and then when they have had the dry fasting for two days they think it's over god said this dry fasting is for 10 days old. ultimately we find one person he seemingly consciously puts obstacles before men so that only the interested will receive maybe i should stop there a little and make you understand that elijah is about to be taken away 
if you are alive you will find out that at the end of this decade many of those that we call fathers in this nation will have gone home to glory we don't wish them dead but heaven wishes it so don't believe me just don't die now be alive it's not a problem because scripture reveals to us that when men have served God in their generation he takes them home many of them will experience this transition to glory because there are a new set of ranking men that God will cause to fill the land and some of you are listening to me today you may not have been serious but what this decade is going to be about is that it's going to be a plane of tra energy transfers mantles are going to be picked up by new men and in the next three years you will find out that the names over the body of christ in this nation will be essentially young men with so great energies in god and because of what i've seen i'm in prayers that lord i will not fade in four years i want to feature in what you are doing because there's a possibility that the names we currently know now as young men will not feature this year is a year of judgment and the reason why god has come as a judge is so that many of those who have labored and are about to fall out of the reward will be realigned god will punish sin and iniquity like never before it will not be an act of wickedness it will be to compel obedience you said you want a prophetic meeting i started speaking to you so if you, if you are playing around the kingdom be serious now because it is not every man that will receive of the fathers being a church member of a father is not enough and i speak to you this is redeemed one of the greatest mantles one of because i don't know the rating i don't know it's first in nigeria but one of the greatest mantles that currently is still in the hands of a man across the globe is in the hands of Pastor E. A. Adeboy. He fathers not a church, he fathers not a continent, he's like everybody's father. Understand me that that man too may not be inherited within the redeemed Christian church of God until God finds an accurate man. The pastors that you know may be may not be the ones that will inherit them because as we continue this story, you will find out that the carrier of a mantle does not have the prerogative of choice as to where his mantle will go if you ask for it if they are sincere they will tell you it is a hard thing that's why when god begins to speak on the issue of mantle or energy transfers in the spirit it's a whosoever will may come thing it's a day when thrones will change and where rankings will change because if a if an unknown willing man shows up he will receive where known men have not received that's why we must trust god that as he begins to cry out and when i begin to read out those six things they are not from my head they are from this portion of scripture first let us establish that we are in a day likened unto the day of elijah the spokesmen of god across the nation are about to be harvested home and in that day they begin to Go on long journeys. Journeys that they know that a, gener a generation that has been positioned for inheritance cannot go. I know we can pray and we can fast. The journeys that we may not be able to survive are the journeys of consecration. Because all of our fathers, at least the ranking ones among them, are men of consecration. Many of them have been in ministry for years, not one scandal. Because they don't play around sin. Not secret or open i know that that journey of consecration will discourage this generation i was sharing with you this morning of an experience i had at sheraton in lagos with pastor e. Adeboy. many of them don't have this celebrity status that have come to define youth ministry where everybody shows up and feels that if they if he cannot sing well to be as popular as uh, molamde in the kingdom he must build a brand around himself too and everywhere he goes he markets that brand and not the christ our fathers are not like that many of them still want to be approachable if not for protocol 
many of them know that they are anointed for people they are not trying to build systems that make them look like gods and the rest of us look like men i hear that bishop Oedebo still goes out for evangelism on a personal note he still relates with street people many of our stars don't do that and the ones that do they do it on social media they make sure that everybody sees that they are doing something our fathers are not like that and in the day of inheritance you see if we don't look like them we will not be able to receive from them god is not scarce because god does not love us god is scarce because aligned men are few we don't look like our fathers and so we may not be able to possess the energies that they used to labor in their generation if god does not find men what will happen is that there will be weakness all over the land and the enemy has planned for this day he knows that we are so occupied that we are not in consecration he's not afraid that we are praying why the church has not been attacked over this nation is that the, the enemy is waiting for our fathers to die because he knows that they may be quiet but they are being quiet is not that it's not a sign that they are without authority our generation does not have authority we can't move things outside church buildings that's why we must trust god that he will set us after this conference on a path of finding where you will show up naked on that day of transfer so that you can be clothed we are too well dressed to receive grace show us mercy this is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Brace yourself for an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.